Hey there, everyone. I've been asked recently what I think would be the most ideal settings for Minecraft Education Edition, and I'm kind of hesitant to say there's um, there exists a certain settings that are the most ideal because this may change slightly depending on what the objectives are in your lesson. However, in this video, I'm going to show you what would likely work most of the time, um, especially if you're just getting started. So right now, you're, you are looking at the main screen when you load up Minecraft. And when I talk about settings, I'm not talking about these settings. I'm talking about the actual settings within the world. So I'm going to get to those by clicking on Play, and then Create New, and then Create New World. And up here at the top, I'm just simply going to type Test. Okay, this is just a demonstration. So working my way down the list, we have default game mode. I'm going to change this from survival to creative. And I'd imagine 99% of the time you're going to want your students to be building in creative because creative allows you to fly and it allows students access to all of the building materials without having to craft anything or, being, or get chased by zombies and that type of thing. So we're going to be in creative mode, not survival. Difficulty level is fine, um, peaceful, that's the default. Now infinite type. Okay, we're not going to choose old, so just forget about that one. So basically, you're left with two choices. In the window to the left-hand side, what you're looking at here, this is an infinite world where students will have access, um, where they're going to be able to see the trees and some hills and some water and that type of thing. And of course, the world goes on and on to infinity. Um, and the flat world, although you can't see the preview window showing the flat world here right now, it's sh still showing the um, infinite world. Flat world is basically just flat. It's just all grass. There's no water, there's no trees, and there's no hills. It just goes on and on again for forever, uh, and it's flat. So again, it really comes down to the objectives in your lesson. I've used um, the flat world with some classes when doing different things, when students have to construct objects or for, like, for science, or if they're working on a math activity, the flat world tends to work a little bit better. Um, but other times I've used, in, when you're building structures and that type of thing, I've let the students use the infinite world. So I guess it gets, depends on whether or not you want your students to have access to those, um, to either the, all the, you know, the trees and the rocks and the lakes, or if you just want them to start with something that's completely flat. I'm going to skip over seed and I'm going to skip over simulation distance. Um, but skip simulation distance, if you crank this up, it really will depend on the power of the device that you're using. Um, so the rendering distance, if I, if I turn this higher, it's going to take more processing power. If I turn it a little bit lower because um, it will give me less of a simulation distance, you might want to adjust this depending on the processing speed of the device that you're using. Um, so if it's choppy, you might want to turn this down. World options. Uh, show coordinates. Right now I have them off when it's in the, on the left like this. This button, when it's on the left, it's off. Um, if I were to turn this on, what it's going to do is show the X, Y, Z coordinates for the player. And this might be nice if another student in the classroom wants to buddy up or find um, a classmate. They can punch in their coordinates and be teleported there. But there's other ways to teleport in the game uh, as well that would be, I think, that a little less confusing and a little more, um, a little easier to use. So I'm just going to leave the coordinates off, and let's go down to cheats here. Activate cheats. Okay, by default it's on, and I'm going to leave that on. Okay, uh, because if I turn it off, you're going to see everything below the activate cheats option is now grayed out, and so it's no longer accessible. And I do want these things accessible, so I'm going to turn the cheats on, and uh, work my way down here. So code builder, I'm going to turn that off. Uh, in Minecraft Education Edition, students can now use coding to control elements of their environment and the characters uh, through their coding agent. Now, I'm going to turn this off because when students accidentally tap on the coding agent, it's difficult for them to get rid of, and they may not be quite ready for, the, for, for coding within the game. However, however if you're uh, familiar with the coding options available in Minecraft Education Ed Edition and you want to jump into those uh, coding elements with your students, by all means, feel free to leave on the code builder. But for now, I'm just going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn on Always Day just so it doesn't get dark when my students are building. And down here to Classroom Settings. Okay, I'm going to actually turn these on, and when doing so, I have more options. So teachers can control more parameters over the game by turning on the classroom settings. So again, we want that on. Perfect weather is always nice, so it's not raining and there's no thunderstorms. So I'm going to turn that on. Allow mobs. Mobs are essentially the animals in the game. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. However, 
a very good case to be, could be made to leave this on uh, some of the time because, for example, if students are constructing a pond and they want to put fish inside of it, with the mobs off, they're not going to be able to do that. They won't be able to spawn any animals within the game, and they may um, want to do that. It may be part of the lesson, so you'd have to turn that on. But by turning it off, what I'm essentially doing is just removing all the animals so they don't, they don't get in, in the way of the builders. Show destructive items. These are things such as explosive devices or TNT. I'm going to turn that off, but once again, maybe you want to have those on because it is appropriate for the lesson. But I'm going to leave those off. Player damage. Okay, player damage just allows the, the player to get hurt during the game. I'm going to turn those off so they can't hurt themselves. Um, immutable world is turned off, which is fine. I'm not going to turn it on because if it's on, students can't create anything. They can't break anything. They can't add blocks. They can't make any changes, and that defeats the purpose of using this. But again, I'm not going to get into it right now. There may be times uh, where you want to make the world immutable so that they can't change uh, different aspects of their environment. Player versus player damage, I'm going to turn that off too so they can't hurt each other. All right, and so there you have it. In most cases, especially for new users, these settings might be ideal. But once again, uh, please take into consideration there may be certain things that you want to change here depending on the objectives of your lesson. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a direct message on Twitter or send me uh, an email if you work within the board. Thanks for watching.